This masterclass series about building a PPC Fly menu configuration has four episodes. And the first one will be about building up the layer structure we need to manage for that little menu. And we'll first look at what it is anyway. Then we'll be looking at how to create that navigation on the button. So that is event handlers and feedback and so on. Finally, we'll look at how is it done in the default configurations that you'll see in a moment. And finally, how is it in Unisketch. How, how was it done in Unisketch? So a little bit of a comparison right there. But the first thing, we are running on uh, my blue pill here at my uh, office, and then we will add a PTC fly. The cool thing about the blue pill is that this is a server, blue pill server, that allows me to connect any Unisketch panel and uh, have all the power of blue pill and reactor applied to a Unisketch panel. You still enjoy all the Unisketch features. I have myself, my favorite, Unisketch panel or favorite panel maybe all together would be the Rack Fusion Live. That's a really nice one. And this one is a an old Unisketch panel from, you know, like five years ago. And there you see we're actually enabling all our panels historically or most of our panels historically with this new technology. So that's amazing in itself. I'll discover a few cameras here or just add some uh, manually. Um, so for the demonstration of how this button normally works and you see this is how easy it would normally be to just add cameras. You can discover them off the, on, on the network quite often. And um, here we'll just pick some Panasonic cameras. I'm holding down Shift to select multiple. And now I think I have a good selection of like seven, eight, seven cameras here. This is normally all you need to do adding IP addresses, of course, to have a PTC controller functioning with different mixed brands of cameras and uh, mixed brands and models of cameras. So go to simulator, you'll see the PTC fly right here. And I can use this camera selector to pick the camera and the sides on this button will give me access to additional cameras. So this is the center of what this series is about. We want to create navigation like you see right here. And that navigation is press the low edge and you're cycling between camera selection and presets. If you press the size of the button, you're paging forth and back in your presets or in your cameras. And if you're pressing the upper row or upper side of the button, you're cycling through different menu options. All right. So later we'll see how this actually works inside of um, reactor. We'll build this up. That's the purpose of this training. And uh, we'll go into the uh, home screen here once again to just see um, where we are. We will basically remove this configuration. That's the default that happens when you select the PTC fly. You could also have chosen other ones, but this is like the most popular and typical one. This is why we choose that for use out of the box. We'll create a custom one called PTC fun and press create, then we can go to the configuration tab. And this is where we'll be working on it. We just created this little layer and we are now left over to ourselves to build up a layer structure here. So um, to, to, to do these things, uh, I kind of assume that you have a little bit of insight already into what this is. And I also have to admit that a lot of people feel a little bit um, nervous when they see this uh, whole layer structure because it can be quite intimidating. And that might also be the case for you in that in, in case that is what you how you feel about it. That's not the main point of this episode. The main point is to show you how you can make a button that has different functionality and different edges and also depending on on, on different things. So um, maybe you can fast forward, uh, you know, beyond or uh, past some of this. We'll see or, or you'll know yourself. But what we'll do here is to create a new layer and call it cameras. So I want to have like a group. This is like a group. Uh, and inside that layer called cameras, I want to have uh, another child layer. You can either do it by right clicking and then say, OK, or we can say cams one to five for this one. And then uh, I think we can create a new ch another child layer. Just click this one up here and say, say cam six to ten potentially. OK, so we got that in place. And uh, on each of these layers, we want to, to have some actions. So we'll just drag across, holding shift down, drag across these. We can now create new behaviors on this layer here. So I'll just do that real quick. And then I will do the same up here. You can also right click here, say create behaviors and press this button and we get some dummy actions. The dummy actions means that you see some 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 dummy content in the displays. And uh, if, if you want to, to play, um, uh, play a little bit with this, you could click this one a three. And uh, by the way, if because if I could disable this, 
you see the, the blue ones here are those that are currently visible. So A3 right here is the one that's visible. So if I press show more default feedback and I, um, for instance, change the, the title of this one, I could uh, write play. Before I just had a, an automatic value coming in, you see that I was able to easily customize this feedback to a hard coded value. And that's that's how you you could have your fun with this. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, you want this to select cameras, which is a completely different process for, from what we're looking at here. These two layers are on top of each other. So camera 6 to 10 is currently overruling what is on cams uh, 1 to 5. And uh, unfortunately, um, or to, uh, to, to um, what we want is to have a variable that drives the visibility of these two. We'll create that variable down on the root layer because on the root layer, this is where I want Let's just move over here. This one, I also want to have an action on this one, A6, that is managing my menu. So uh, I have now created a dummy behavior for that one, and it is down here. But for that one to, to drive a variable for the cameras page, I would create it over here and call it cam page, okay? Like that. It makes this variable, I click in here, and I would definitely urge you to use options because right now, with options, you can add like two options. Say one is page number one, page number two. You can give them a little label here, page one, page two. That might come in handy later. Uh, or you could even add cam page if you want. But the cool thing is that you can so easily change between these values on these two um, buttons here. And that is going to be helpful on the next thing because we want this to drive the visibility of each of these. So we add an active if condition up here. And that's really easy to do. Um, I've been here before, obviously, but you basically select a variable like cam page and say if cam page is equal to the number one in this case, then this should be visible. You see something happen to the visibility here. It is now not blue anymore on the border like this one is. And blue means that it's visible. By default, layers are visible. But if you add an active if condition, you are limiting visibility by a condition like this one. And I say this one should be, then be two. OK, so now we have a condition up here. If cam page is two, this is visible. If cam page is one, this is visible. And as I now go to the variable and I click here and here, you can see this is changing around. I hope this should be logical for you that a condition that if it's true will then make the layer visible. You can even see difference in the displays. Just notice it. You see, that is what's happening. Now we want to do the same for presets. So we'll just quickly um, basically go up here. No, wait here. And then we say create a new layer. We'll call this presets. So that is like an enclosing layer for presets. So then we'll click this one. And then we'll say um, page presets um, presets one to five we'll just add more of these pre six to ten pre 11 to 15 so now we have three pages up there that's nice we want to do the same well we could create these um, behaviors as well but uh, yeah we need to do that actually so let's just quickly um, just so that we have some visual confirmation. Uh, go across these, create behaviors on this layer. It's the one that's selected. So I can quickly just make some dummy behaviors by selecting the layer, right click and create behavior and press create. So now we have that. If, if we want to see changes happening, we can always watch what is in this path up here that will reveal which of these layers is the dominating one. But as you may have uh, guessed, uh, as I've seen bef uh, said before, the blue behaviors in the tree are always the behavior that is currently driving the button's functionality. And um, what we just did by doing this is that now everything down here, even though camps one to five is actually a visible layer, the, the thing is that the behaviors we put on that layer is superseded by the layers that are above it. So I would say if we took cameras here and we say move up, then we move now cameras up above presets. And the, the consequence is that now our camera behaviors are the ones that are, are dominating down here. Uh, we could confirm that by just quickly having fun on one of these as we have done before. Let's just pick a different color. That's a quick way to, to see it. OK, there we go. This one is now a different color. Uh, pink is a bad one. I know why, because in a moment we'll use pink for all the preset layers. Actually, you know, maybe we'll do that right now because I'll just go to cameras here and say, let's have 
a different color on that one. I usually choose warm. So now warm is the default color for the layer and that is gonna influence all the behaviors that are picking you up, except this one. That one, we had our own definition of a color. Let's just pick blue in this case. So that, that is of course different. And if we go down to the cam page variables and we change it over to this one, so these up here are visible then, we, we don't see that anymore. So we go back here, choose this. Maybe just for the sake of sanity of our minds and the system here, we'll just wait, just remove this color so they are all the same. Now in presets, I would rather want to have the color being pink, just like we usually do on these controllers. And of course we don't see it because the camera selector is overriding presets down here. Now, um, one of the things we need to do is to have that four-way button on the controller changing between whether we see cameras or presets, cameras and presets. And that is why we'll create a variable on this layer that we could call um, cam or preset, something like that. And then this variable would also be options and we would then add two options and the one we could cal call cam and presets, cameras, presets, like that, so we now have that variable down here. We can again choose between the values and we would now click on this one, add an active if condition and say, if the variable camera preset equals, I think I chose the label value, this one, then this is visible up here. We would then also act, add an active if condition and say, if that one is instead cam, then that is visible. So let's just see if we go down here, zoom out a little bit, because now you can see the pink color coming from the presets down here. So if I manipulate this, yeah, you see visibility is changing from the presets to the camera's grouping layer. And then inside of these, we would also be able to page, you see? Presets, camera, presets, camera. And now we are on camera. If we go to the cam page and we go between these two, we have two different pages here. All right, and we now need to add the same thing for the preset. So we'll just quickly make a preset variable. We call that preset page like that. And we have three of those. So we'll just, uh, yeah, we could go with this kind of range function, but once again, I still like the options because as long as we don't have the menu navigation, it is much easier for us to manipulate the um, presets one to five, six to 10, 11 to 15, there we go. And then we will add this a condition for each of these up here. Say that variable called preset page needs to be equal to the value one for this one to be visible. Now I'm now I'm Oh, I just removed it. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, luckily, <laughs> it's kind of still there. And, uh, could I not just add it like that? Apparently not. Okay, submit, submit. Okay, so now it's here. I can edit raw. Edit raw lets me take this variable or this whole condition here and then just take it up here, edit raw, paste it in, change the value in by hand. This is what a guy like me would definitely do instead of using the 10,000 clicks of the um, dialog. And now we have this functionality embedded. So let's just try it out. Uh, actually, I'm a bit concerned right now because I see that one, two, three, and none of them. Oh, wait, that's not true. Never, never mind. It's just because uh, we need to, of course, go to camera presets. We need to go to the presets here. And now we see the first one of these is actually active. So if, if I go here and I change that value, you can see the visibility is changing over in the tree as I am now paging between those. And you can also see a little bit of change up here in the top of the displays. Just notice that. So we can also see the controller is reacting. Final thing is that we want the top menu here to change because as I press the top edge, we were cycling some menu stuff. I'll just sub, uh, collapse these so that we have a little bit of clarity on our, our, our tree. Once again, I think even though we don't need it because the menu pages doesn't need to be disabled altogether. You see, enclosing the pages of cameras in a in a um, in a layer and enclosing the the sub pages or layers of presets inside a layer allows us to change the visibility of that enclosing layer so that 
the toggle function between the two just works super nice. We don't need that for these up here. We could just create four layers on the same level that would all be driven by a variable and it could then still, still work. But it is convenient for the structure of things to add another child layer here that we call menu folder. We could call it a folder if you want, if you think this is a nice name for a layer that is in our group. And inside this one, we would then create um, uh, pages. Now, actually, there's a function here called create pages. And uh, it's something that experts like me would use. So that helps a little bit, we can create a page like, you know, four pages inside of here, we can then choose a variable to drive it. And uh, that might actually be a pretty good idea to choose a variable to drive the pages because this means that we get the variable created down on this level. But let's just see what happens if we choose the default. But just so you know that you could have created a variable on beforehand to drive a menu like what we're doing. But this is like, click. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, you get like a little menu here with these pages. Actually, I, I kind of regret that I did it like this, because what you usually do is that you 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 mark a number of um, um, <coughs> components on the controller first before you do this. So I feel like just quickly deleting these. Oh, wait, I can, of course, I can undo. So I go back here. And then I will drag across. And then I will create pages and submit confirm. And I get the same as before. Okay, noob, Casper is a noob. I will then right click here, create pages. And now it's suggesting it in the way that I want. It says these are four components, you know, hardware components seven, eight, nine, and 10 on panel number two created on this layer. Yes, I want to have four pages. I want that to happen. Please give it to me. I press submit. Okay, there's a dialogue here confirm. And now I get these pages. All right. So we have this variable menu select page here, which is just like we have seen before, giving us what we have spent a lot of time building manually right now. And that is all super convenient, except the fact that it is using a variable called select page that is right here. We have two options now, now either to recreate this variable, remove it here and recreate it down here because we want a six to manage it. And we can't manage that variable in this layer unless it is on this level. A6 can only work with variables that are here or below. And therefore, we need to move it. Two options. We go into JSON or we remove it and recreate it down here. We can do both. But today, we'll go into the JSON. So I'll just make this a little bigger so we can show JSON for this variable. And uh, no, actually, I won't. I need to go down here because I need to have the larger scope of things. And um, what, what we see now is the whole JSON for this this um, from this point on the, the file PDC fun and all the JSON that includes these layers and so on is now visible in the JSON editor right here. So we see that we actually have definitions of our variables. Um, we have a cam pre cam page preset, I'm now holding down shift and clicking this little button that helps me to to um, open and close various sections of the JSON very convenient. So basically, I want to copy that variable up to this point. So uh, and then we have all our layers here. Let's just try to collapse this and then see this layer would be the menu folder. And inside of that one, we have the variables here. So I take select page, select page until this point. All right, and then I can remove this. And then I move up here, I put a comma and I paste it in. And I could format the code and just to double check if I am doing this right, I do save current file, I can go back here. And you see it has actually moved down on this location. So I now managed to like manually move that variable from the menu folder down into the PTC fun layer. And from here, I can now play with it. And we'll see that our menu pages up here are also changing around. So far, this is all we need to start creating our menu button, which is in the next episode.